In this video, I'm going to talk about CTLA-4 and inhibition of the T cell response. So we know that the T cells are actually activated by antigen presenting cells such as macrophages. Now macrophage express MHC class 2 and MHC class 2 bind peptides are recognized by T cell receptor. So MHC class 2 and T cell receptor mediated interaction gives a stimulatory signal for T cell activation. Other than that, there are co-stimulatory signals which comes from CD8 T expressed on the antigen presenting cell and CD28 expressed on the surface of the T cell. Combinedly, these two interactions give the necessary signal to the T cell nucleus for its activation. Now, once these signals are received, the T cell is considered to be activated. And once the T cell is activated, it would interact with the B cell and activate the B cell as well. Now, B cell activation would lead to production of plasma cells and thereby antibodies against the pathogen to neutralize it. So, T cell activation is super important for the immune system. But imagine a situation where T cells are hyperactivated. Then, instead of helping the body, it might make the situation worse. So, we need a safeguard mechanism by which we can prevent overactivation of the T cells. And this kind of mechanisms are present in the T cell itself. Two days later, after it is activated, it is found that the T cell surface express a molecule known as CTLA-4, which is very similar to the CD28 molecule. Now, CD28 family molecules are important for or, in, or act as, they act as a co-stimulatory signal for T cell activation. But the CTLA-4 do not act as a co-stimulatory signal. Instead, it acts as an inhibitory signal. In red, it is shown that CD8 T and CTLA-4 can interact and give an inhibitory signal. Now, not only CD8 T and CTLA-4 interaction gives a negative signal, but also it prevents CD28 to interact with CD8 T. So, it also sequester the ligands for the CD28 receptor. And that is how it prevents the T cell activation. Imagine at a point of time, there are like three CD8, 4 CD8 T present in the antigen presenting cell. Now, three are occupied or interacting with CD28, but one is interacting with CTLA4. Now, you are having three stimulatory signals or three unit of stimulatory signal, let's put it in this way, and one unit of inhibitory signal. So, you are not totally abolish, abolishing the excitatory signal or the activatory signal, but you are putting a break kind of thing. And that is how you are attenuating the activatory signal. And that is how T cell response or the T cell activity falls down. This is one of the mechanism. Other than this mechanism, sometimes the CD8 and CTLA4 mediated signaling can give rise to specific cytokines which are preventing the activation of further naive cell. Here, a naive T cell is represented which has the receptor for this cytokine secreted by the T cell, which is expressing CTLA-4. And these cytokine-mediated signaling tells this T naive T cell not to get activated. In other words, this T cell activity would be reducing or the over activity of the T cell can be prevented by these kind of safeguard mechanisms. As if there is a brake always there in the car, right, with the accelerator. So if you only had accelerator, there might be chances of accident. So you always have a brake to prevent the chances of accident. And exact similar kind of mechanism is present in our immune system. See how beautifully designed our immune system is. Apart from these CD, C, CD80 and CTLA4 interaction, which we have looked so far, there are many other, these kind of interactions are found in T-cell and between APCs. 
APC express HVEM, which is another ligand for BTLA receptor. Now, this BTLA receptor is expressed in T cells and B cells, and this interaction is also inhibitory. Other than that, PDL1 and PDL2 are the two ligands for the receptor PD1 expressed in T cell. Both these interactions are inhibitory in nature and trying to bring down the hyperactivation or the possibility of hyperactivation of the T cells. And in this way, our immune system has designed a mechanism by which it does not affect its own body by hyperactivation. And this is also a mechanism of tolerance. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.